This is the Raspberry Pi, a $35 single board computer from 2012. Don't let its diminutive size fool you, this tiny computer has an ARM V6 CPU, a Broadcom GPU, an Ethernet jack, 512 megabytes of RAM, an SD card slot, an HDMI output, a composite output, and a 40-pin GPIO header. The case actually comes separately. It is the Pibo case from Pimoroni.com. Now, computers like this are fantastic for tinkerers and makers. Running a full fat Linux operating system, or, or even Windows if you're so inclined, as well as having that 40-pin GPIO header, you can use the Raspberry Pi to make anything and control external peripherals using that header or USB. And makers have taken advantage of this, using the Raspberry Pi to make everything, from a satellite tracking globe to a security monitor, an AI-powered thermometer, network-attached storage, a photo frame, a retro gaming machine, and even a brewery temperature controller to make your own craft beer. And that's just some of the thousands of projects that people have made using the Raspberry Pi. As cool as the Raspberry Pi is for making things, it's also a very capable computer, especially in the later revisions. Although this has never been the primary focus of the device, requiring you to connect your own keyboard and mouse, install some sort of case, and even figure out how the power button is gonna work since one isn't included with it. But that all changes with this, the Raspberry Pi 400. The Raspberry Pi 400 is a Raspberry Pi 4, which itself is 40 times as powerful as the original Raspberry Pi, stuffed into a keyboard and including a mouse. It's basically a complete personal computer costing just $70, or $100 if you buy a complete kit including a project booklet. The 400 features a 64-bit ARM V8 Broadcom processor running at 1.8 GHz, 4 or 8 GB of DDR4 RAM, Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 5, Gigabit Ethernet, three USB ports, two micro HDMI ports supporting resolutions up to 4K at 60 Hz, a micro SD card slot, and a 40-pin GPIO header. The keyboard is available in several regional layouts. Connect the Raspberry Pi 400 to a monitor, and you'll have a fully working Linux desktop for just $70, assuming you already have the monitor. Yes, the Pi 400 can still be used for makers to make stuff, but with this form factor, it's a very viable personal computer for everyday use too. I've just received my 400, so let's unbox it. Okay, so here we are with the Raspberry Pi 400. Uh, as you can see, it comes in a quite chunky box, and here on the side, it is showing us the ports that the device has, so the GPIO header, micro SD card slot, micro HDMI, USB-C power, two USB 3s, a USB 2 and gigabit ethernet. And on the back, you have a little description of what's going on here. Uh, you'll note here it says UK, so that's the keyboard layout. They have other layouts available like Spanish, French, obviously US and so on. Uh, you have the specs here and a little introduction to the machine itself. Okay, so uh, let's see what we can do here. So we can open this cover and we reveal a white cardboard box. And let's see what we get when we open the thing. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, well, straight to the main content. There it is, the Raspberry Pi 400 itself. Okay, so here it is. Ah, it's not as light as I thought it would be, which is nice. Uh, let's see what else we get in the box before going on the, the main thing. So how does this open? Uh, oh, okay. Yep, there we go. Uh, so we have the Raspberry Pi official USB-C power supply. Okay, in my case with a UK uh, plug. We have the Raspberry Pi official mouse. We have a micro SD to SD adapter. 
And here, we have some other stuff. So we have the official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide, how to use your new computer. Okay, so this is a really nice book. As you can see, fully updated for the Raspberry Pi 400, fourth edition. And we also have what I can only assume is, yeah, a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. So let's lay everything out. Okay, so that's what was in the box. Now, of course, there's a mouse here. Uh, so let me go ahead and unbox this little box here. Uh, it has one of these uh, plastic thingamajiggies. And as you can see, there it is, the Raspberry Pi mouse uh, with a color scheme that matches the device. Scroll wheel. I mean, honestly, it feels kind of cheap, but then again, for what it is, you can't really complain. And uh, not that it's very exciting, but let's also unbox the power adapter. And as you can see here, I have the UK version of the power supply with a actually quite nice Raspberry Pi logo uh, engraved onto it and the USB-C uh, connector. Now, looking at the device itself, you can see that there is a standard QWERTY layout keyboard. Uh, there's also the function keys, a T-shaped uh, cursor key arrangement, uh, a nice Raspberry key here. And we have indicators here for scroll lock, caps lock, and power on. Uh, other than that, it looks like a very standard keyboard. And in fact, um, yeah, it looks absolutely normal when it comes to keyboard layout. Now again, if we look here at the back, uh, the SD card is actually um, pre-installed. Okay, so I'm assuming that runs uh, some version of the Raspberry Pi OS. There's this weird cover here, um, which is covering the GPIO header. I have to figure out how to remove that. The two micro HDMI um, inputs, the power USB, two USB 3s, a USB 2, and an Ethernet jack, and what I can only assume is some sort of Kensington lock, maybe? I'm not entirely sure. And on the back of the device, uh, you can pretty much figure out how this thing is built within. You have a custom layout, Raspberry Pi 4 in here, so it's not the same exact board as you would get with the Raspberry Pi 4, okay? They've changed it to fit in this form factor. Some vents here, uh, some sort of sticker label thingy, and there are some nice uh, rubberized or something similar feet to help the thing from sliding around. And of course, the idea here is that you would actually connect the mouse, you know, directly to the keyboard, so you don't have um, the HDMI cable going to the monitor and obviously the power cable. So let's get this thing connected. Okay, so I've got the Pi 400 hooked up. Let's see what happens when we power it on. So, this goes here. Resized root file system, rebooting in five seconds. Okay. Okay, and we are welcomed to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Interesting. Uh, and we'll go through the setup process. So let me just adjust the camera angle here so you can better see what's going on. Okay, so welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Before you start using it, there are a few things to set up. Press next to get started. So we'll choose our country here. Uh, Malta, my case. But I do want the language to be English and uh, time zone Malta use US keyboard no next it's setting my location now okay so we can set a password so the default is raspberry and the username is pi I'm gonna set my password keyboard feels pretty nice 
uh, it's kind of like um, a laptop keyboard but with a little more travel the desktop should fill the entire screen tick the box below if your screen has a black border at the edges uh, it does in fact have a black border at the edges okay next oh wi-fi okay so i'll go ahead and connect to my wi-fi network okay so the operating system and applications will now be checked and updated if necessary okay let's go ahead and see that okay so now it's gonna download updates i'm just gonna let this take its time one hour later well downloading and installing the updates took a while but uh, it's complete now and uh, it says i need to restart for the changes to take effect so let's go ahead and do that okay and that seems to be complete and I, what I do notice after restarting is that there are no longer black bars around my screen okay everything seems to be fine so that's definitely done something weirdly I wasn't asked for my password when rebooting but I guess that's how Raspberry Pi OS is right so I'm gonna install a screen recorder here so we can get a direct feed from the Pi itself Okay, so I've lowered my resolution here since running a screen recorder whilst trying to use the Raspberry Pi is not ideal. Uh, but as you can see here from the main menu, by built-in there are some programming tools. So there's the BlueJ ID for Java, there's Genie for GTK2, there's some versions of Scratch, uh, and there's even a Python IDE. Okay, so let's see actually how this IDE looks like. Oh, okay, so that's pretty simple. Uh, print. Uh, let's see. Hello world. Oh, okay. We need to save it. Uh, my program. And there we go. <laughs> now, again, this is not going to win any awards here, but yeah, it does work as a very capable programming environment. In the education, I have Smart Sim, so this is a, a digital log logic circuit design and simulation package, as you can see. There is LibreOffice, which I am very curious how it will perform on the Pi. Now, do bear in mind, guys, that I'm running a screen recorder in the background, so it's not going to be fantastic, but we can give it a shot. And okay, so it seems to have loaded fine. Let's see here, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Okay, uh, okay, yeah, so that works fine. So you have a full office suite. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, we have the Chromium web browser. Uh, now this is very capable and I was even playing some YouTube videos earlier. Uh, however, I don't know how well that's gonna work uh, when you have um, a screen recorder going, but I'm gonna try it out anyway. If I can learn to spell, let's see how this works. Oh, okay, well, that actually does work. Now, I should note that the Raspberry Pi 400 doesn't actually have built in speakers, however, the monitor I've connected it to via HDMI does actually have uh, speakers in it, so I'm actually hearing sound now as well. Now, I don't know how well this is going to look with the screen recorder going, but without it, it works perfectly fine. Okay, so what else do we have? Uh, we also have a mail client and a VNC viewer. Sound and video, it comes with VLC media player by default. These two are screen recording programs that I installed to try and get this thing working. For graphics, we have an image viewer. We have a few games built in as well. Um, okay, I guess... Boing is some sort of Pong clone, I assume. Let's see. Oh yeah, it is a Pong clone. Okay, so that's basically it. Now again, it's running a slightly bit slower here because of the screen recorder, but you get the idea. And of course, there are much better games, much more uh, involving games that you can install once you have this thing running. Okay, so that's done. Uh, let's see, accessories. Uh, an archiver, calculator, file manager, PDF viewer, pretty much the things you would expect. There's a help section and in the preferences, 
Uh, this is where you can set your appearance preferences, um, like changing the desktop, which I've already done. Uh, it comes with quite a few nice uh, images. Uh, so let's see islands, for example. Yeah. And um, you can also modify your screen configuration from here. And that is where I set the resolution to 1920 by 1080. It does, however, support up to 4K and up to 60 Hertz, as you can see here. Okay, so yeah, that's basically it. Now again, guys, um, the whole point of having a Raspberry Pi is that you can do stuff with it. <laughs> and so in future videos, we'll be doing just that. But right out of the box, it's a pretty functional computer system uh, that you can use for general purpose tasks. With powerful hardware, a compact form factor, the Linux operating system, and a very low price, the Raspberry Pi 400 really is a general purpose computer that can be used by anyone. It brings back memories of small, cheap computers like the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, reintroducing people to the fun of computing, but with much more powerful hardware. By the way, if you're interested in the Spectrum, check out my mini documentary and other related videos about the ZX Spectrum in the card that should be appearing above. Now that I have my 400, I plan to do some cool stuff with it. Maybe set up a retro gaming machine, or buy some accessories and try out one of the thousands of freely available tutorials you'll find online, both on Raspberry Pi's website and third-party maker sites. I'm really happy with my 400. And I hope you are really happy with this video. If you are, why not like and subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so you'll be notified when I make new videos with this Raspberry Pi 400 as well as other tech and retro videos. I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, thanks for watching.